Hey y'all, here is my layout and I want to share with you a few tips of methods that I utilized while creating this layout. And so um, first I've got here another file for us to play with as we work in this tutorial and I just brought a couple photos in here to work with. And my first tip is to show you how I filled this uh, film strip. And um, for my purposes, since all my, my uh, photos were vertical, I ended up rotating it 90 degrees so that I could work with it this way. And let's see, I think I actually, um, yes, I have it this way. And I'm going to turn off the photo layers now move this over a little bit and I'm only going to fill in a couple of blanks to just to show you how I did this because if you just move the photos right underneath here let's move this up um, you see that they show through and then you're stuck um, you know trying to maybe uh, position it how you want it uh, you know this might be a method that others might use you can make that selection and then inverse and delete part of that photo away. That is one way that you can do this. However, at this point right here, you'll notice that that photo is permanently changed and you cannot easily go back without bringing the photo in to fix it. I'm going to press Control Z on my keyboard and we're going to um, back up. And I'm going to show you the method that I utilized with this. I'm going to get my rectangular se uh, selection tool. And I zoomed in a little bit. And I just simply drew a little bit extra outside of the bounds of the box, but not into um, the circle area because I, I wanted to make sure that um, I covered all of the hole. I'm going to create a new layer and it doesn't matter what color uh, you utilize. Get the paint bucket tool, make sure I'm on my new layer, fill that in. And then what I did was to duplicate this three times so that um, I don't have to create it all uh, each time and to do that I just simply uh, hit control J four more times one two three four and there I had uh, have now five of these squares I'm gonna drag them all into position if you wanted to I could use my left arrow key on them uh, and that's going to keep them all exactly lined up. Uh, I didn't do that. I just eyed it. But that is an idea that you could use is your arrow key. And there, I filled them all in now. And, and these are template layers. Then what I did was to bring my photo. Let's see. This one is the first one here. I'm going to bring it right above this template layer. And with the photo layers, the active layer, hit control G. Now I'm able to resize this and move it around until I got it exactly where I wanted it and then clicked OK. Now, because I'm using this method, maybe um, later I decide I don't want it in this spot or um, I want a, you know, maybe the you know I wanted it a little larger or a little smaller because after I get it in there maybe I want all the head sizes to be the same and uh, you know what and I, and I can still go back and edit it again and change it so then I did let's see another one let's turn this on bring it on down here once again hit control G to group that with my template and put this right into that slot. Now, you'll notice 
that when I did this, this particular template um, for the film strip, this particular film strip is torn and my photo sticking out. And so um, I found that this was really easy to deal with. I don't have to permanently destroy my photo at all. I'm going to make that template layer, this layer here, active, grab my eraser tool, get my splatter brush, and I'm going to simply begin erasing. I'm using the eraser tool and I picked a splatter blush brush I can't talk and it's really cool because as soon as you start doing it see it even looks ripped and so I can go right up to this area here and uh, erase on down until it matches now it you'll see I made a mistake right there I kinda did it on purpose I, I erase too much so what do I do I go get my brush tool doesn't matter what color it is and I draw it back in until it matches right up with that edge and, and maybe it's not grungy enough so I'm going to go a little bit beyond go back and get my eraser tool and erase again and there you go oops I zoomed out too far you see how quickly that was to make it look like it was uh, ripped and a part of that uh, rip thing and my original photo here is uh, right here is not harmed at all so um, if I wanted to start over with the new template layer underneath I could do that that's my tips for filling this in now back to my layout I have a couple more things I want to share with you the title the are the quote here um, to me when I had it in at full opacity and no matter what color I, I utilized that quote just was grabbing too much focal uh, attention and I tried several blending modes to the quote but I found what worked best was to simply lower the opacity until it took some of that visual weight away from it kind of blended it into where it looked like it was sort of uh, part of the paper um, grabbed a little bit of uh, the uh, tint of the paper and uh, was still readable and so that's a little tip that I've shared around my forum before and I have one more little tip for you down here if you look really close in this postcard you can still see the word photo let me get this original postcard that Teresa had done and this is what's actually there um, but uh, this word photo over here photo West and Sons you know it to me it's not applicable to the people in the photo it kinda might give uh, future generations a false uh, indication they might think that that you know they I do genealogy <laughs> and I look for little details like that and you'd find me googling that all over to see if my grandparents might have had their photo taken there and so to me I didn't want it to say that but I kinda like the word photo showing through um, so that it look uh, it because the layouts all about photos and so to take care of that I used the eraser tool and I just got uh, actually no I'm sorry I didn't use the eraser tool I you don't want to use the eraser tool you'd leave a big hole there I got the clone tool and you can hold down your alt key and click out here and cover up all of this that we don't like but I kinda you know liked the W and, and the E in there and so at this point what I did was I came up here and I lowered the opacity of the brush and then when I drew it just sort of faded it a little bit so it wasn't distracting from my text that I had over it but yet it was still kind of uh, there and so um, that's my little tip for you to use that uh, opacity um, in, uh, in the clone tool and so I hope you've learned something and uh, get out there and scrap <laughs>